Color plays such an important role in your garden design, in any kind of design really. So in this video, I wanna cover some of the top mistakes that I see homeowners making when it comes to color and color schemes and using color in their garden. And then I'm gonna give you lots of tips for achieving a beautiful color scheme at home so that you can have that garden that you've always dreamed of. My name is Amy and over at Pretty Purple Door, I help home gardeners design landscapes that are uniquely you. So let's get into these mistakes and solutions for color. Mistake number five is not actually choosing a color scheme. And a lot of times when people come to me asking for help with their gardens, they say things like, it doesn't feel cohesive, the garden doesn't feel like it flows together. And a lot of times that's because there actually is no color scheme in their garden and things are just not flowing together. They don't feel like the same space when you go from one area to another. So actually choosing a color scheme ahead of time is gonna save you so much time and so much frustration. The biggest thing that I hear my students say is that when they go to the garden center, it really narrows down their choices and not in a bad way. It's just that when you go to a nursery, there's so many options and there's millions of plants and it could take you all day to get through all those plants. But if you go with a color scheme in mind first, it really cuts down on how many decisions you have to make and the choices you have to make. You can kind of just stick to the purple and yellow flowers and pick from there and it's just going to make it a lot easier and you're going to know that everything that you choose is going to go together, at least visually, by color. As a designer who was actually trained in color theory and I took college classes on it, uh, this is really my jam. I love talking about color and I have an awesome article on my website. I'll leave a link to that in the description below that goes over all different color schemes for your garden that you can try out at home. Mistake number four is using too many colors in your landscape design. And I know it's really easy to get bombarded with all of the beautiful choices that you have and kind of pick too many colors. But again, this is the reason why it often doesn't feel like it flows or goes together. When you're new to color and you're not really trained in how colors work together, my biggest advice is to stick to one color at first, just choose a main color for your garden. And that doesn't need to be as boring as you're probably thinking in your head. If you choose purple for your color, for example, you can have really bright purple flowers and then you can mix them with really light lavender colored flowers. You can even choose foliage that's really a dark burgundy color. So there's a whole spectrum of color that you can choose from even if you're just using a purple. So think about that and as you get better at understanding color and you know that all of those plants are going to go together because they're all in the same color family then you can start to add to that and kind of build your garden out from there. Make sure you check out that article in the description below for how you would do that. But even in that article, I'm recommending starting with one main color for your garden to keep it feeling cohesive and make it flow. And again, this just makes your shopping experience and choosing plants a lot easier and a lot more fun to do instead of just being overwhelmed all the time when you're trying to make those choices. Mistake number three is not having color in all of the seasons. So I find this to be really common where a homeowner will choose perennials, but then they find that it only looks really nice in spring and then by summer everything putters out and by fall, just forget about it, there's nothing going on. So make sure that you're thinking about all the seasons of the year when you're choosing those plants and kind of learning about when they bloom so that you can make the right choices so that you have a little bit of color going throughout the year. First, try to think about obviously spring, summer, fall, and winter. And then in my Design Your Forces and Garden course, we get a lot more nitty gritty about that. And we even go into early spring, mid spring, late spring, early summer, mid summer, late summer, on and on. So there are definitely seasons, not just the four seasons, but with perennials, they don't bloom for as long of a time. So you have to kind of keep replacing what's going on so that you have color all year long. And another option, if you're not into just trying to figure that whole thing out, is you can choose some annuals. So annual plants typically will bloom for the entire season from the time that they start blooming, basically until frost if you live in a colder climate. So adding or supplementing with annual plants in the same color scheme is a really good option to keep that color flowing from season to season if it's feeling like it's a little dull in different seasons of the year. And if you liked that tip, you're gonna love my three garden design secrets training. It's about an hour long and I do talk a lot about creating four season interest in your landscape totally free. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can sign up and check that out. Mistake number two is not being bold enough with color. So earlier I talked about choosing just that one color and building your scheme from there. But like I said, there's nothing wrong with doing that and getting started in that way. And there's nothing wrong with creating like a specialty garden, like a moon garden or something that just has one color in it. But I find that people are either on that spectrum where they are 
going too crazy and choosing too many colors or they're not choosing enough colors or not making enough of a statement in their garden. So being a little bit bolder with your color choices can really add a lot of impact to your design. Not just color, but foliage can work too. So I'd consider if you are doing a landscape and it's just feeling a little meh, you may wanna pick another kind of a showcase or a focal point plant that is in an opposite color of what you're using in your landscape to really draw attention to that space. And just don't be afraid to experiment and be a little bold with color at times. It can really help move the eye around the landscape and make it feel more energizing and more vibrant and just a lot more interesting. Obviously that's not for everyone. You can go with a really calm, relaxing space and not a lot of boldness or not a lot of contrast in it. But if you're feeling like you need that little pick me up, try adding a contrasting color or something bold to your design. And mistake number one is using colors that actually clash. And this is a whole thing with colored theory too, where there are just colors that don't really go so well together. I don't wanna discourage anyone from using the colors they love in their landscape, but this can be a problem. And if you're finding that in your garden, you may want to kind of revise things. So one of the biggest color clashes that I see in gardens is using a really bright red with really bright magenta. And I'm not saying that red doesn't go with pink or that you can't put those two together, but oftentimes because red is so vibrant and so bold and so is magenta, when you put these two together, they can really clash. So things that you can do to prevent these types of things is number one, you can separate bright, bold red from the bright pink magenta colors. Uh, put something in between them so that they're not planted right next to each other. Another thing, like I said earlier, is you can kind of stick to the same color family and just play with the variations of color inside of that family. So instead of just having very, very bright, bold everything, you could do light pinks and dark pinks and brighter, bolder ones in the middle and just stick within that color family. You really wanna make sure that you're not making things clash and making it too hard to really discern what's going on in that garden bed. Color plays such an important role for how we feel in our gardens. Different colors actually have different meanings and it's really fun to start exploring that. So I really do recommend you check out that article in the description below for some ideas of like what blue means and what purples can mean and what bright yellow, sunny yellow means to people. And you can actually build a really cool color scheme just based on like the feelings of what these colors really mean to you. Uh, I think it's a really fun way to design a garden. And if you're looking for some more inspiration, I have lots of other color theory videos on this channel. I also have a lot of other mistakes style videos like this one. So I'm going to leave some suggestions for you right here and I'll see you over in that next video.